sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Dan Jurgen. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. The Krypton Report podcast is dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl, and the planet Krypton. We discuss movies, TV, game, comics, and all things DC. So join me, Tyler, with my co-host James and Jania. Welcome to The Krypton Report. And continuing my interview with podcasters and friends, I have on today's episode the host of Always Hold On to Smallville, Mr. Zach Moore. Welcome, Zach. What's up, man? Happy to be here. That's glad. You know, it's nice to have you on the show. We've talked about this for a while, and it's just been, well, crazy. I mean, you have a busy schedule. We have a busy schedule. (laughs) Yeah. um, So Zach's podcast that I've talked about probably just about in every episode I've mentioned um, (laughs) – is he is going back and, you know, reviewing Smallville. And what's crazy is we're on here, I think by the time this podcast episode airs, we will be right past the 20th anniversary of Smallville. Isn't that crazy 20 years ago? Like That makes you <laughs> feel old, man, to know that you, the, the fresh new Superman of the 21st century that you grew up watching grow up is now, it <laughs> shows 20 years old. I mean, you know, I, I've talked about before on your podcast and in here just how, that show was in the background of my life and was really like where I was in life. Mm -hmm. And then now we have Superman Lois, which as you can see, the child behind me uh, represents where I am in life now. And it's just kind of crazy because I'm like, you know, you still watch Smallville. You're like, oh yeah, Smallville. You know, it's not Smallville. And now you're like, there's like kids who weren't even born when the show came out who are now finding Smallville. Like, oh, I like Smallville. And you're like, yep, I'm old. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... It's cool to, it is cool because, you know, Smallville is at that perfect time to sit back, watch, and kind of reminisce and recap and look back on it compared to, um, you know, the newer shows and stuff. Like, you know, was it, we just hit the 10 year anniversary of Arrow? Um, nine? Was it nine or is, yeah, because let's see, Arrow was 20. Yeah, it was nine years. Yeah. Yeah. I had to think for a second. I was like, wait. And, it, yeah. it's, you know, it's, and it's only been over but one year. Really. Yes. So next year's a 10, 10, ugh, next year's a 10th anniversary of when the Arrowverse started. Right. And it's already like, wow, that whole thing. Cause it's not like arrows, you know, arrow is done and over with, but there's still that remnants that continues because of the other shows that it came. So it still feels like it's part of our lives. Right. Though it's, I mean, I'll, Almost Dumb. all the other shows going on started on Arrow in some form or fashion. I mean, obviously the Flash, Barry Allen showed up first on Arrow, and the only uh, the only spinoffs were Black Lightning, which because it was originally supposed to be a Fox property, yeah, true spinoff, like yeah, unrelated. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Supergirl uh, started on CBS and wasn't supposed to really be part of it, and then Star Girl, which mm-hmm. is on C- on CW, and eventually will probably get in the fold somehow, but uh, I think because they're moving to Canada next year for filming, I think, if I remember reading something. But every other show, Flash, Legends, Batwoman, all were spun from an episode of Arrow. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, Superman and Lois was from Supergirl. Which they folded into the Arrowverse, obviously. So, yeah, yeah. it's all... Man, we could have had, yeah, that's an alternate universe somewhere, right? There's Smallville had its Flash spinoff and its Aquaman spinoff and its Supergirl spinoff and its Green Arrow spinoff. I mean, it's so funny. You look at the the characters. I mean, other than Aquaman, who obviously went on to movies and was the most successful movie of the DCEU, you know, which is, you know. It, it blows uh, your mind like Aquaman. Really? Aquaman. I, and I love the Aquaman movie, by the way. I mean, it's it's... I don't know. I just, I found it a, a great, enjoyable superhero movie. But, you know, outside of Aquaman, who they tried to spin off, literally shot a pilot for with Justin Hartley, who became Green Arrow on Smallville a year later after they didn't pick up that show, all those other characters could have easily had, you know, they have shows now in their overs, could easily have their own show from Smallville. I always all want, you know, I always wanted the Smallville spin off show to just be like the Justice League, where kind of like how the 90s X Men cartoon was like, it would have this intro with all the X-Men 
but not all of them were in the episode. So you'd have this Justice League show that maybe this week's episode is a uh, Green Arrow, or and this week's is uh, you know Aquaman. You know, you wouldn't have to have mm-hmm. all the characters all the time, and right. we never got that. And it's sad that Smallville ended, and so did all those other potential characters to live on. So yeah, yeah, it, it's true. I, I think they they talked about Steven S. the Knight, who wrote and directed justice the season six episode i think he actually planned to do a spinoff uh like there there were talks of that but it just would have been too expensive and uh, obviously at the time and then of course you know tom welling never wore superman costume so at some point you got to either talk around that or end it or convince him to do it i mean so if, if he's never gonna do that what are you gonna do yeah um but i mean yeah so zag is the smallville guy you know that's and <clears throat> so I have these questions here that we talk about and, you know, we're going to throw them out there, but, you know, being the Smallville guy, some of the questions are like, nope, don't count, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. but, <laughs> but still being the Superman guy, um, you know, it, it all works. So the first question is, how did Superman start for you? You know, what, what's your first uh, remember, like, was it, you know, like the more I've thought about mine, I think my first visual of Superman was the Flesher cartoons. Like I, I remember getting that VHS and I actually have that tape up there on my shelf. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, and I, you know, I remember those somewhere in the background, you know? Uh, so where does Superman start for Zach? I think it definitely starts with the Christopher Reeve movies. You know, my parents had them on tape uh, so I watched them a lot as a kid, you know, put on my little Superman costume, watch along. Uh, also, uh, the George Reeves show, The Adventures of Superman, it was on Nick at Night when I was a kid. Uh, so uh, I remember just, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if kids still have these, but I had a little, like a little trampoline when I was a kid. So I just remember jumping on that, <laughs> watching the show, that kind of thing, you know, taking off. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, so those are those are my formative memories of Superman. Also, complete side note, and I'm sure I don't know if I've actually even mentioned this before on, on the podcast or not, but we had a phone booth in my house growing up. What? Uh, yeah, my my mom used to work in, in telecommunications, and uh, they were she's doing some you know job. I think it was from. I believe it might have been from Astroworld or something. Some some place that had phone booths that were getting rid of them or something, and she was like, "Can I have that?" And they were like, sure. And it's this wooden phone booth. And it was always this conversation piece in our living That's room. Awesome. Up. So that was part of my, you know, Superman thing. I have pictures of me as a little kid in there and the Superman, uh, Superman costume too. I, I should, I should post those. And I don't think, you know, I don't know if I've mentioned those or not on, on a podcast. I don't, I don't think it, so. I don't, <laughs> I've listened to pretty much every podcast you've done on always. Hold well, thank you. Smallville. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I discovered your podcast back in season one. Cause our first mm-hmm. conversation was Ryan. Yeah, or, or straight. Or straight. Yeah, the, and the then Ryan was second. Yeah, the, the yeah, Ryan no, I mean, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we go way back, man. So it's it's <laughs> yeah, cra- yeah. it's crazy how much time has passed. Right, a lot of um, life has changed in the last. I didn't think it would take me in real time ten years to do Smallville. I, I think I'll. I won't take me ten, but it'll be pretty close because I thought when I started, like, yeah, I'll just. I do like three of these a season and I'll be done in like, I don't know, four years, but three of these a season, three seasons a year. Yeah. But you know, life happens. I take breaks to do other things. Go kind of like, Hey, Superman Lois came out. Let's talk about that. So exactly. Anyway. I mean, how could you not as a fan, like this, this new show with a new, like, and I, I said this before is like Superman Lois was like, kind of like, okay, let's blend Lois and Clark and Smallville into a show. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, so. it's like, where did, we're going to kind of redo Smallville it with their kids and then we're going to kind of do a continuation of kind of where we left off with Lois and Clark, like yeah. the next, you know, the, the next moment. And so everyone's yeah. like, okay. But you know, that uh, you said that about the phone booth is cool. Um, there's a place up here, like an outdoor shopping mall town that still has phone booths that are for fun. And every time I, I were up there, I'm like, yeah. And we were on vacation one time and we found like a phone booth graveyard. And I was just like, Oh, wow. <laughs> it was just creepy because, like, it's all these old, like, boxed, you know, phone booths. And I'm just like that. It's haunting. Um, it's a relic of a, of a, di- of a different era. You, know. you, <clears throat> you talked about your photos, which would be awesome. Uh, I've been asking my mom to find the photo of me at the washing machine with my arm like this crying because she had to wash my Superman costume pajamas. 
Oh, no. So they're in the washer, and I'm just sitting there in my you diaper. You couldn't wear them that one my, day. You're upset, right? Like, I'm in my diaper and my underwear, like, I was, you know, cause I was, and I'm, like, just crying because there they are. And, um, you know, when you talked about Nick at Night, I think, the, you know, you think you sometimes the memories kind of, when you're young with that, you're not sure. But I think my first Superman with George was on Loa, um, I Love Lucy. Like, I think oh, I saw wow, the okay. I Love yeah. Lucy episode before his actual show proper because I used to watch I Love Lucy with my grandma, and I remember seeing that with my grandma and great-grandma. So I think that was my first introduction to George as Superman. Yeah, but, and the, the George <sighs> Reeves show, I I mean, it's on DVD now. I don't – is it on HBO Max? Nope. It's part okay. of my campaign to keep mentioning it like, hey, you know – that's why, like, I say, like, I miss DC Universe. And people are like, oh, well, it's all on HBO Max. I'm like, no, it's not. Because what I loved about DC Universe was the stuff Everything. I didn't own. Well, yeah, I mean, the old Shazam series that it was you couldn't find that was just there. It's like, wow, this existed. You know, or the George Reeves Superman, which is harder to find all the seasons. I have them um, all on DVD from back in the day, so I'm holding on to those. I, I mean, even when stuff gets streaming, I always I'm gonna get, get we're collectors, man. We're fans. We're gonna keep ex- all, all this stuff. But, exactly uh, because of like you mentioned on your podcast, is sometimes streaming services will clip, nip, and change little things in what they broadcast. Like um, one of the most interesting things, and I point this out is go to if you were to go to Netflix right now and watch the first episode. Or how, okay, this episode, the Reaper episode of Supernatural. The musical cues are not the musical cues that they were later put on season one on the DVDs. Oh, okay. Because when they were able to release the whole media, they had gotten more popular, had the budget, they could buy the classic rock song music that they wanted to use. It's all like that of the time pop songs, you know, just like on Smallville. But they took all of that out when they released on home video home media, whatever. Yeah. Right. And it's all like in the, in the episodes, don't fear the Reaper. If you watch it on DVD, but if you watch it streaming, it's all the original music does when they broadcast it. And that's why it's even weirder because of course, Supernatural's legacy is the last episode always starts with carry on my wayward son, recapping the season or seasons, depending on where it is. And that's like what it kind of became the unofficial theme song. But if you watch the streaming of the first season, it's not that song because they didn't have the budget. So it's it's to me, it's like that's another reason why the home release can be very much like a times capsule because we all know how on digital you can just edit. It's just a file, you know? Right, right. And they can change whatever they want. Yeah, um, uh, I got a shout out to my friend <laughs> Matt Truix. He's experienced this a couple of times. Once with Birds of Prey, <laughs> and then again with Lois and Clark because there's some popular music on Lois and Clark that not all of it gets replaced, but some of it does on both these shows. Uh, but like it's it, it, Lois and Clark's on HBO Max now in HD, which is fantastic. Yeah. Right, everybody go check that out. I watched uh, the pilot, which the pilot, which is awesome because it's a it's a made for TV movie basically. So exactly and. A lot of the music is there, but some of it's not. Uh, so hold on to those DVDs. Same thing with Birds of Prey, right? I mean, it's just because they didn't have these music packages, right, when they sold the show and, and the way that uh, syndication <laughs> and, and, and streaming has all gone and stuff like that. So hold on to those DVDs. Always hold on to those DVDs, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so Smallville, for, very fortunately, Smallville didn't have that problem. The DVDs had all the music. Hulu, it's on, as of this recording, who knows where it'll be, yeah. you know, whenever anyone listens to this, right? But uh they have all the music, so I, because that would be, I would be heartbroken if they had to change anything on Smallville because part of my huge fandom is the the music. So anyway, yes. um, it makes you hey. wonder when the Blu-ray. <laughs> we have the Blu-ray coming uh, later this yeah. month. Wait, yeah, wait. October. Yeah, in two weeks. In two weeks, I think it is. I, I, I think it'll be fine because if it was fine on the DVDs, it'd be fine on the Blu-rays. I mean, always, that's my understanding. I, mean, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> it makes sense. It always makes me wonder, like, how the contracts or the license, because I mean, everything's changed about. Um, how you know shows sell and the royalties and everything works through syndication now that we have streaming so it's like right. who knows what the contracts were set up for back when like you said when they sold these shows um, so we got Zach starting with Chris now did you see Superman 1 first or 2 because my memory as a child is always I don't know which one I saw first because they just blended together in my mind 
Yeah, I think I saw them simultaneously. You know, I, I remember, you know, this is big in my household, and I, I've said this. I know I've said this on the podcast before. We record stuff off TV. Like, I don't know if everybody did this, but we have VCRs and blank VHS tapes. I still have, when I watch Return of the Jedi, burned in my brain where the commercial breaks were. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was the only Star Wars I had until they did the THX uh, first trilogy box yeah. release in like 90. Ordered again for the last time, right? It was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, he wasn't kidding. George Lucas, <laughs> he tried to tell you that this was the last time he could own those. No, I feel the same way. I mean, like King Kong is my favorite movie of all time. And so I watched the colorized version on TNT and we recorded that off TV. And so like, I'm just, I know exactly when it's like, it's going to fade to <laughs> fade to black. It's so interesting how we, how we watch stuff like that. But anyway, I know we're going on so many <laughs> side tangents. Tangents, tangents is, that's, what this, that's what this is about. Yeah. It's, it's about getting to know other fans and podcasters <laughs> who podcast about the same stuff, but just like who you are as a fan, you know? Cool. Well, yes. Well, I'm all about tangents, so it's not, it's not a problem for me, as, as if you're on the podcast that I do, right? But uh, I, I think I must just watch them simultaneously, and I think you always do some of those things when you're a kid. You have all this time, and it's like, well, I'm going to watch the Superman movies today, this weekend, right? And yep. so you just watch both of them, and the one and two do kind of flow together anyway, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so those are the ones I would watch over and over and over, and we never had Superman 3 or 4. Um, I've said Superman this before. 3, Four was just on TV constantly. I felt like it was always on basic cable, like WGN was, or whatever. Like it was always like, I maybe. feel like every time I was at my grandpa, every time I was at my grandpa's house, you know, I'd play in his basement, and I felt like I'd turn it on, and there was Superman Four. Like it just <laughs> was there. Three was the one that I didn't see till a long till actually oh um, six when they released wow. all the because okay. my they'll come in on DVD huh, for Superman Returns. Yeah. Because my local video store had the box, but the the copy was always gone. You know, and as a kid, I didn't think about, well, let's go check the library or another video store. That's right, kids. You didn't have access to everything you ever wanted at all times back when we were kids. And that was probably another factor why I never saw Superman 4 for a long time. I remember Superman 3 I saw on TV, but it, like, scared me. It was was when the the woman becomes a cyborg. I was like, that's terrifying. yeah, yeah. And, it's and, then, and I know a lot of people who saw it, no matter what, like, whenever, when you saw it, if you're at a certain age and you saw that, it's one of those things that just sticks with you. It's like, oh, my God, it's like it's going to go run and hide behind the couch situation. It's just it's just terrifying, right? Because she, like, the music stops and she screams and it stops and he comes to his side. It's you know, just know, eerie. You're a it's kid. Weird. It's like, oh, it's unsettling, right? I bet if I go and grab my kids right now and show it to them, they'd be like, <laughs> scar them for life. <laughs> I'd be like, so what did you guys do in the last podcast? Well, me and Zach Moore were talking, and we decided to scar our children for life. That's so right. So we showed them the Superman 3 scene. You guys got to, th- got to go through the same rites of passage as that we did. But uh, but Superman 4, I eventually saw we rented from a you know, blockbuster or something. And that was, I mean, I say like later, like, I, you know, I was probably watching the Chris Reeve first two movies, and I was like five or six. And then like maybe when I was like nine or ten, I saw Superman four finally. And then somewhere in there I saw bits and pieces of Superman three. I mean, you'd always see so to me, Superman three was always on TV. Mm. It was like you see bits and pieces of evil Superman here, this or that. So like I kind of knew what it was. Uh but one and two are the ones I just watch over and over and like burn into my mind. It's like my favorites and, and always will be, you know. So <laughs> And I mean that that's why like I have such a high defense for Superman Four, because like it was just there. Part of the part of the childhood, you know, in the background, and you liked it because it was like Superman versus like a nuclear man. He's powerful. He's not exactly like a Kryptonian, but yeah, it's a guy in a costume. It's very he, comic booky. Yeah, Superman so has an, I mean, it's it's not it's not a great film, <laughs> not even a good film. But you know what? They they did some stuff that is straight out of the comic books. I mean, you got Superman with a giant net of nuclear missiles thrown into the sun. I mean, that is straight out of comic books, and you got to <laughs> respect that, you know. And you know, it's it is what it is, you know. And, it is what it is. I'm glad it exists. I'd rather have four Christopher Reeve Superman movies than three or two, you know? Because, I mean, there's it's good a- parts to it, and his performance is good. And, you know, one of the big things I actually liked about it was he went back, like, to Smallville as Clark. And we have this great scene mm-hmm. of him on the farm. Uh, and one of the deleted scenes is, like, him looking through where he's selling the farm. And then he hears the guy pull up, and then you see him turn on the Clark. Like, you know, and he No, comes no, out. That's, that's in the movie, though. That, that's, is it? Uh, yeah. And maybe it's an extended scene. I don't know. There's a lot of deleted scenes. There's a lot of extended deleted stuff before. <laughs> I would love if they somebody found that on a shelf and WB and cleaned that up and released it because that would that'd be well, fantastic. You still these fan movements a, going on out there, right? <laughs> there's a guy who's doing it himself, little by little. Uh, I can't remember his name. He just did an interview on uh, 
Superboy Legacy podcast. He was talking about how he's been cleaning up for and yeah, Aaron Price, things. I think his name is, and he's Maybe. doing some special That's special sound- effects and stuff. I mean, I'm keeping an eye on that. Look, that looks interesting. I, I don't know if I don't know if uh, I mean, obviously, he doesn't have access to the like deleted scenes that aren't all dirty and stuff. Because if you right. if anyone's seen the the DVD sets. Mm-hmm. They, ha- they released some deleted scenes for Superman. I'm like, okay, that's kind of fuzzy, but whatever. But some are like got scratches all over them. And like, where did you find this stuff? Like, you pull out of the trash can. Like, I'm, I, I'm sure there is a complete somewhere scenes or a cut of a rough cut of this in some archives. And just people just need to find it and restore it because it's the last Christopher Reeve Superman adventure and it deserves to be seen. Because if I people mean, don't know, Superman 4 was like, it got slashed like in half. They cut like 45 minutes out of it. Uh, so despite its dodgy special effects to begin with, the story is kind of nonsensical because they took out like a third of the movie, you know? Yep. So I, I'm all, I'm all for that. And, and I, it, and I think it does have historical significance since it's one of the, the cursory Superman movies. So, I mean, it does. And the thing is you could, if you put it out like Warner archive, it would sell just like they released Supergirl and yeah. they released it on DV Blu-ray with like two of the cuts. Like, right. One, I got that one, one too from the Warner archive. Yep. Right? One cut was the, the director's cut, like I think the Blu-ray or the DVD was, and the other one was the standard. I don't remember. I have yeah. it. But I have, yeah. if they did Superman 4, I mean, they released the three-hour TV cut of Superman the movie. Yep, same one archive. Yeah, yep. I got and that. I, I that. love that. Yeah. So we, we, There's I, an audience for all this stuff, you know? Wait. And I think, uh, and Christopher Reeve, just even beyond just Superman fans, like pop culture, he is super mad. Right. And, and, and he always he's will the, be to pop culture. He's the culture. default. Like, yeah. you, you know, when you say Superman in just a general overarching conversation with just your normie, that's your default. Mm-hmm. It'll be a long time before that isn't your default. And then it's kind of like, who would it be? You know, like, well, like, and, I, and I think that, I think the reason that is, is because one, Back then, there was less media. There was less options. There was less <laughs> versions of everything. It was like, okay, you had your... Well, Kirk Allen was the first live-action Superman and some serials. Yep. Um, and then there was George Reeves on the show, which lasted yep. several seasons. And George Reeves was Superman for, for like 20 years as far as pop culture goes. And then Chris Reeve comes along. And he's Superman in major motion pictures, like four of them over the course of over a decade. And then, and then no one... There was no other big movie Superman until Brandon Routh, who was playing... Chris Reeves, man. So that even extends the legacy, you know? So, so if you look at it that way, it's like, yeah, there's no, the, the, the reach of him as Superman and the pop culture imprint is, is going to be really hard to replicate by anybody. Cause even today you have Henry Cavill playing Superman in movies. You have Tyler Hecklin playing him on TV, right? You just had Brandon Ralph return as him on TV. Uh, you, you have all kinds of versions of everything going on. So th- there's not like, no one has a, a sole claim on the character like Chris Reeves did for so long. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely correct. You know, it's we had the crisis that was kind of a, hey, look at all the stuff that we've had. So, but, all right, moving on with all my questions here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, you're fine. I'm mm, tangent all day. Uh, favorite version of Superman. Now, that means it could be a movie, comic, you know, even if you're like, hey, I love the old radio. Like, what is your favorite version of the character? You know, as a Smallville guy, I feel like I have to say Smallville, right? Because that's like the definitive Superman for me uh, to an extent. Obviously, Christopher Reeve is the definitive Superman for me as Superman, but it's like, I just, I love the Smallville universe so much. I love the Smallville universe, you know? And of course, mm-hmm. you know, if you listen to podcasts, I poke a lot of fun at it and make and have a lot of criticisms of it, but it all comes from a place of love, right? Yes. I mean, um, if you love it, you have the right to say, hey, I know it's not perfect, like, you know, I told, yeah, I told you this there's before. nuance, you know? <laughs> My brother, we would watch it. Eventually, the theme song became Somebody Save Lana. You know, not Somebody Save Me. You know, he was like, Somebody Save Lana. And I remember when I was watching the 10th season, he's like, that show's still on? Because he had, like, dropped off in season eight, you know? and <laughs> that, was, that was most people's reaction when I told him I was still watching Smallville in, like, the later season. Like, whoa, that's, that's, is he Superman yet? I'm like, well, <laughs> no, but... Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean... It's small so much like its own thing almost. It's hard to say. This is my favorite version of Superman. It's my favorite show. People ask me, and so it's my go-to. So, I mean, if I had to say, yeah, definitely my favorite TV show would be Smallville. My favorite movies would be the Christopher Reeve movies. And comic book-wise, I got to go with, like, anything written by Jeff Johns because he's my favorite comic book writer, and especially his team with Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Mm-hmm. I feel like they capture the character writing and visually-wise um, and because they draw him like Christopher Reeve. <laughs> do, they do. <laughs> so it's much. You know, I was I was recently talking about that because you know we 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 have the the Superman seventy eight comic that just came out, 
and we have the Batman 89 comic that just came out. You know, and I was talking with some friends, like how it's interesting to me how they're able to draw like Michael Keaton just enough where in your brain you can say it's Michael Keaton, but it's not an exact likeness. And then you look at the Superman 78 comic and you see how they draw Christopher Reeves similar where it's just enough like him. But then I'm like looking at the Gary Frank, like this almost looks more like him than the 78 comic does. And I'm like, how do they get away with that kind of likeness? Um, because they're not saying that it's him like they are. So it's just interesting, you know, when you bring up uh, how they, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank had done it. Mm -hmm. Even most recently, if you go back and you look at uh, Doomsday Clock, where I think was the last time Jeff Johns and Gary Frank had done the character. So, Mm -hmm. uh, little cryptos in here. (laughs) That's what my my kids named our, our white puppy. There you go. Crypto. That's a cute dog. <laughs> he's a cute dog. He's 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 a great puppy. Um so I mean that that takes out like a bunch of questions because we know, but you know, Smallville is great. Like I love small like I have the Smallville jacket hanging up over here, and I have all the Smallville action figures, all three of them. You know, <laughs> all three yeah. of the, the Clarks <laughs> they released. Right. I'm I I'm bummed they never released like you know, trench coat Clark, like black trench coat Clark. I feel like. Oh yeah, I, I love the, the blur costume from season nine. I, uh, I, I just, you know, I have the fungal pops, you know, and mm-hmm. they have one wave, and I was always hoping for a second wave. Maybe yeah. we'll get one. I don't know because the first wave came out of nowhere. I was like, okay, like what was this? Like a couple years ago, like twenty eighteen or something, twenty nineteen. Yeah. They're like Smallville. I'm like Smallville Funko Pops. Real late on this. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> and it was weird because it wasn't like. Okay, for example, like the, they did the Clark Scarecrow, which makes sense. You know, then they did the Clark Kent season finale shirt rip, which is great, but I feel like that's not a that's I have that one, but I feel like that's not like the number one representation of the character. Like, why don't we have like? Well, yeah, it's 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 blue shirt, to, red jacket, or to the to the same thought of that it's like if you ever look at, I would say half of the internet articles about Smallville these days. It's always the last shot of the show with him ripping the shirt. I was like, first of all, spoilers. Second of all, that does not represent the show at all. <laughs> that I, is such false advertising. <laughs> I wish, you know, like I love the red jacket. Like I, before I even owned it, like, I just thought that was cool because it was the closest of giving him a costume that was more his own compared to, you know, anything else where he was ripping off the Brandon Routh costume or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I would like that as a Funko or that as the image of Clark, you know, and that's like when crisis and everyone's like, is he going to be Superman? That was what I was hoping. Like maybe he'd go out in the barn and grab that jacket and put that jacket on. You mean the season 10 jacket? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, the, the, the first wave of, of the, of the Funko pops, um, they had the president Lex, which I loved. I was, I've always loved Lex in the white suit. So it's funny. Uh, yes. I know that doesn't represent like the Lex of the show that often, but that did show up a lot. It showed, yeah. I mean, even season one, it showed up. Season seven, whenever they have like alternate evil Lex Luthor feature visions, that's what you have. Like President Lex has got the glove and all that. And I thought, yeah, that's kind of a deep cut. But I, I, I that was on my list. Like I, I always want something of this, and they made it. It's fantastic. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, Green Arrow, I, yeah, great. But he was a main character in the last three seasons and like a guest star and a, and a few episodes before that. that but. I, I get like Green Arrow is popular now because of Smallville, but making him one of the first wave of Funko Pops is it was I don't know I didn't I didn't no I'm with I you I didn't because, understand that yeah because you know like separating the art from the artist Chloe was a bigger deal to Smallville you know we didn't get a Chloe we didn't get a Lana Pop but we got Lois in her business suit which is like flash forward last episode Lois. You know, like, well, the, to, to be fair, she's not wearing like her glasses and stuff. So I think it is true, true, true. And I, and I saw because I was wondering, like, <laughs> is this a generic Lois Lane or is this small and specific? If you look at, um, I believe it's the second episode. Yeah, the second episode of season nine, Metallo. If you look up uh, images, like just photos of the episode, like promotional images of Lois, Erica Durant on set. She's wearing something that looks pretty much like that. So I'm like, that must okay. be what they based it off of. See? Um, but still, season nine, <laughs> like, it's like um, Smallville was so much more than the last two or three years, right? I think yes. most 
most people know Smallville from the first first two or three years. So like, so, so I know we're like talking about like collectibles and stuff now, but real quick on the Funko Pop thing, like the first wave, right? As, as we kind of were talking about Clark on the Scarecrow with the S. Got it. That's a poster. Everybody knew that. Yeah. You know, makes perfect sense. That's iconic. Got it. It's funny that he's wearing the boots, little work boot, like little work boots. The, Tom Welling wore those on set, but Clark was naked. <laughs> like Clark was wearing boxers. So it's yeah. like, you're telling me that Whitney beat him up, ripped all his clothes off, and then put his shoes back on? No, that, that's just a funny, like, no, <laughs> there was no QC check on that. Like, well, I'm someone just, saying, just saw the photo, like the set photo of Tom Welling was like, oh, yeah, he had, he had shoes on. I'm just thinking, supposed did they to ever do a Funko with like bare feet? That's not like an animal. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've tried to draw the line to just Smallville because I don't want to fall down that rabbit well, hole. <laughs> yeah, I, I fell down that because I had friends get me a couple. And, like, I, I still stick to just basically Superman. And then mm-hmm. I have, like, one of each Justice Leaguer. So I have yeah. comic book, Jon Stewart, uh, Flash from the TV show, Aquaman from the movie. You know, like. There, so there's a, there, is there a uh, Flash from the, the Grant Gustin Flash? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, See, if like there was ever a John season. Wesley ship fungal pop, I'd be like, ah, maybe I gotta go. Maybe I gotta oh, get I would, it. So. I would totally get uh, With the red boots, speaking of shoes and stuff. But but so so we got Scarecrow Clark. We have series finale, last shot, Superman, Rip, Clark. Okay. Then you have President Lex. Great. Lois Lane. Okay. Green Arrow. Okay. So it's like, these are all like season seven forward, except for Scarecrow Clark. So I, what I, so fine. You know what? That's wave one. They did their market research. They decided we got to have a Lois Lane in here. Green Arrow's popular. Sure. Give him a Lex and then we'll give you two Clarks. I, that, like you, blue shirt, red jacket, Clark. So, this, so, so here's my, and I say this a lot on Twitter, but I just want to <laughs> say this now. All right. Wave two for the Funko Pops. Blue shirt, red jacket, Clark Kent. All right. Season nine, trench coat, blur, Clark Kent. Uh, Lana Lang with the kryptonite necklace from season one. Chloe Sullivan holding a Smallville torch. Lionel Luther, number five, with long hair. (laughs) I mean, that's that's your next wave. Like, and then keep going. Like, do like you know, you you do the Kents, you do the other heroes, if you do three and four. But for you, got to have more of the Smallville core cast, in my opinion. If you're going to do more, I I have no idea if they're going to do more. I don't know what the sales were. I would love if they did more because I want to expand my collection to have. To have just more, of, like, because Smallville, it had a lot of stuff, but there's not that much Smallville no. memorabilia, merchandise. Well, so, like, anything that's, like, officially put out with Smallville on it, I'm all about it. So, anyway, well, like, there you go. There's my phone call <laughs> rant. <laughs> um, no, I agree with you because we get all these waves of other stuff. And I'm, I'm hoping, like, you know, one of my biggest hopes is with McFarlane putting out so many figures that they'll go back to starting to issue figures from shows. Because I want my Tyler Hecklin Superman figure, but I would love for them to go back and do like a Smallville figure, um, you know, because like you said, I, I have, there's three Clarks that were released. The first one where he's wearing the blue sweater. The action figures. Yeah. Y- yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I have all three of them, you know, and then that one was, there was uh, that one, Lex and Cheerleader Lana. Mm-hmm. And then they released like the Justice line of figures, which the first one I got of that was Flash. And then I got the last one I got was uh, Clark because he was harder to find. I still don't have Cyborg. Um, that's the one I didn't get because it's it was harder to find, but the price had went up so high so quickly on that one. But those are over there. I have the Green Arrow, Aquaman, and Impulse. Um, and then the one that I didn't know existed for the longest time was the figure of Clark with the red jacket, the season 10 red jacket. Yeah, your, your favorite jacket, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that one I paid pretty penny for because I was yeah. going to have to have this one. <laughs> but uh, but you know what? To, re- to wrap back around your original question, uh, you know, the reason why Smallville is my favorite, I would say, is because it came out at the perfect time for me. Is anyone's listening to any of my podcasts, it says all the time, but I was the same age as Clark Kim was on the show. So I grew up with him all four years of high school. Unlike Clark, I did not drop out of college. I graduated, so I think our past kind of <laughs> kind of yeah. diverged at that point. Totally, uh, but it was still just a, a marker of my life, you know, for for ten years. I mean, think about you know, from when you're fourteen to twenty four, a lot of life happens, right? But the one constant in my life was Smallville. You know, I mean, so I was in that's high why school. Always be my favorite. I was two years ahead of you, so I was in high school. I went through college, a few years of wandering, 
got married the year, like I got married a couple of months before Smallville ended. There you and go. Like, and then like to commemorate, like as a wedding gift, my, my uh, mother-in-law got me a gift card to a tattoo shop as like for me. And then when Smallville ended is when I got my Superman symbol tattoo done. And I'm like, thinking about all, like you said, all that life that went on, but that was in the background, you know, cause like I watched it live for the first three seasons and then I lost a little bit in season four and five because that was like my, I'm working all the time. My parents would forget to DVR it or they'd erase it or whatever. So like, you know, oh, no. <laughs> you know, and you're just kind of like, <laughs> and then I picked up, you're like, okay, when the season would drop on DVD, I just go buy it and watch it, you know, binging it before we binged on Netflix. And then season eight on, I watched live, you know, and that was, uh, also season 10 was around when they started the CW app. Like, but, you, but it wasn't an app. You had to stream from the website. Cause I remember watching the blue beetle episode from the website, the CW mm. on my laptop. Uh, see, look at this old, old conversation. We, we've come such a long way. It's <laughs> not like, Oh man, it's okay. I missed arrow this week. It'll drop on Hulu tomorrow. Right? Yeah. No, none It'll of that. Be, no, it, no CW.com <laughs> catch up on Supergirl. None of that going on. I just so bought it on iTunes. Then. So it drops in the morning <laughs> and I watch it. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like, you know, it's crazy, but you know, I was I, so mad. I had, I had a band concert, um, freshman year of high school and, and I sent my VCR wrong and I missed leech <laughs> you know, and I was so upset. And then I, then I had to go like on, you know, share bear or lime wire, one of these things. And I, that's what I always have to do if I missed episodes back in the day, like somebody, you know, would upload these episodes and, and you download them. And of course this is the internet speed weren't that fast. So you gotta, you gotta download it before you, before you leave to go to school. And so maybe by the time you got back, it would be, it would be, be done, done and you could catch up. But anyway, <laughs> that program of the VCR, very important. Very but important. But while you were at school, your mom picked the phone up off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's like, yeah, by that point, I think we, we, we moved past dial up internet. Thank goodness. But <laughs> uh, my, my mom was always behind on text. Like, we don't need that. And then like, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what's funny is I'm always big. Like if you're into a comic book show, it makes me so mad when you're like, we're not going to put them in costume or we're going to do stuff out of costume. It's like, you know, watching Titans. Sometimes they do these scenes where they do their super rogues, but they're still in street clothes. And I'm like, why? I'm like, you should be in costume. And I, I do this speech, but then I watch Clark and Smallville. And I'm like, somehow there, there's a comfort and I'm okay with him running around in his farm, farm boy jacket, you know, being Clark. Cause you know, I, one reason is like, I have never been even before Smallville, a huge fan of the concept of Superboy in the comics, like oh yeah, of him like, of him having a suit in Smallville flying around, like that is such a yeah, like, as give a, away as a your child, secret identity much, right? Like you know, eventually someone's gonna start to put stuff together that Superboy was in Smallville at this time, and then Clark Kent arrives in Metropolis when you know. So I've never been a huge fan of that kind of whole concept. I mean, I know there's actually a lot of history of Superman that comes from the Superboy comics because, you know, with, that's when Jerry Siegel was, was able to go back and he was able to like ghost write a lot of Superboy and mm-hmm. he wrote and he expanded the mythology of the character and a lot of the stuff that we just know as Superman, like more about Krypton and stuff like that. Bizarro the, made his first appearance there of all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Came out of the Superboy comics. And so I, I'm okay with the comics existing, but you know, if, but when I come to looking at, that character in like live action. I like the idea of like the Smallville where he's figuring himself out. He still mm-hmm. does stuff, but he doesn't have this. I'm going to go put on my costume. And right. like, when did like, I always joke, like if that's your thing, Superboy, Okay. When did he wake up one day? Like now I am Superman. Yesterday yeah. I was Superboy, but today I am Superman. Well, that's, what's funny about, I mean, I have seen just a small <laughs> handful of episodes of the Superboy TV show. But it's like, bro, how old are you? You're like, <laughs> you're, sure, you're, you're not a boy. You're, you're in college. I mean, Gerard, Gerard Christopher was right? older. So Gerard Christopher was older as, when he started as Superboy than I think Brandon Routh and Henry Cavill as Superman. And Dean Cain. And Dean well. Cain. Like, okay. I think, I think, because I heard, I read this once, and that's, this is why I always said with him, like, I think Dean Cain was like 27 when he stopped playing Superman. 
And Gerard Christopher was like 31 when he started playing Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, are you kidding me? It's like, um, but that was a whole licensing right because they could a, use the boy name and not the man. But there's it's still, all kinds of stuff with that. Yeah, but but I think you know, and the the the, the crisis, the you know, there's so many crises on DC Comics nowadays, right? But the original 1986 Crisis on Infinite Earths, they rebooted Superman and they just erased Superboy, and that was a genius decision. Yes. Uh, but but. Superman the movie did it first. People don't realize this. People don't think about it because that's the current continuity. But there's no Superboy in Superman the movie. Yeah. Like, but there is enough wiggle room. Where, like he, he opens that right. He opens that backpack and you see those blankets. You're like that could be his costume. That could be when the Superboy show took place. So anyway, I love that kind of headcanon stuff. But I mean, just just realistically, like you're talking about, like you think about things in comics and they're cool. You look at them in live action. You're like, well, I think we need to change that. And I think that's definitely something that you have a lot of fun. I think the best way to do it. And this is hey. Jeff Johns and Gary Frank did this in Superman Secret Origin, one of the best, uh, my, one of my favorite Superman origin stories. Um, they, they have Superboy go to the future with the Legion when he's a kid, does yeah. all his little adventures in his costume, and he comes back, and I think they erase his mind, or maybe they don't. Sometimes they do. But I think that's a great cheat of how to, like, you incorporate that, but then you don't do anything. Because in the Superboy comics, most of his adventures were with the Legion because they didn't have... They don't have this comic anymore, but it's called Adventure Comics. It was one yep. of my dad's favorite comics. I have so many old ones from my dad, and those were Superman and the Legion of Superheroes when he's a little boy and they're in the future doing stuff, right? So that's anyway, that's to me, that's a loophole to make that stuff work. But other than that, I don't I agree with yeah. you. I don't want Superboy flying around in small villain costume, right? You know what's funny is like in the in the Jeff Johns Secret Origin, a super issues one and two are like okay, but I love what he did when they got to Metropolis. Because I loved how he did Metallo as being like under General Lane, and I love this the smallness of it. You know, you know, I was like, I love Superman Birthright. It's one of my favorite. But my favorite part of that story is actually the beginning, where he's like building up to go to Metropolis. And then by the end, you know, it's this huge, you know, battle thing. But what I loved in Origins was just how small it was. It was Superman versus like Parasite and Metallo. Yeah, you the know, movies can learn a lot from that. By because once you have like it's the end of the world stakes, where do you do? From, where do you go from there? Where do you go? You can't. You can't top it at that point, right? <laughs> exactly. So, um, so you're talking about like live action. So here's like the question that divides all Superman fans: trunks. Where do you stand with trunks? You have to wear the underwear on the outside of the pants. That that is essential to me. Like I, I like I don't. <sighs> I, I don't like look at ones without them and say like, oh, well, that's like, oh, here's the, okay. Like I, <laughs> obviously it's from the time period, right? Um, but he's an alien and they, this is how they wore stuff on the alien planet. Fine. Like there's no need to, I, I disagree with the reasoning of why they take them off. If that makes sense. Like I don't mind costumes when they're not there, you know? Um, I don't think like, oh, it's a terrible costume now because there's no trunks on it. I disagree with the whole, like, well, that looks dumb, and it's the 21st century now. We need to take them off. I'm like, no, that's how Superman looks. You know, like, yeah. you don't need to take those off. I think with Batman, it kind of it makes sense. It's more tactical stuff. Like, I don't, I don't think all these other superheroes need that, but with Superman, that is how the Kryptonians dressed, and it's like him wearing, like, some Kryptonian flag, if you will. I don't know. So it's I like the trunks. They never bothered me, and I don't think they're... Um, I don't think they make him look silly because it's just... It, it, like, Christopher Reeve looks... looks he, he demands your respect. Yeah. Walking around like that, you don't you don't laugh at him, you know. I mean, you might, but then you're going to stop when he starts talking to you and stuff. So that's the thing. I love the trunks. I think you know if Tyler Hecklin's costume had trunks and lower shoulders, and a, and a <laughs> cleaner, bigger S. That, that those are my those are my, it's a very it's very close to being a great costume. Um, I think the shoulders have changed throughout the se seasons. I wonder, like, if he just hadn't... They're slightly tweaking it, you think? or Because I wonder if, like, he just hadn't bulked up enough when they started, maybe because of COVID, like, or something, like, he couldn't get to the gym, or... I don't know. But it just feels like when it started, like, you the pilot, it looks like it's a lot bigger up top. Yeah, some of those shots look ridiculous. Like, he's like an action figure. <laughs> and then you go to, like, the, fina the finale, it looks a little bit better fitting. Yeah. So it makes me wonder. But... I loved his S on his previous costume. I yes, I did not like his first costume, but the S was the best part, and they changed it. It's small and like kind of dirty sometimes now. And it's I don't flat. understand. Like I yeah. like the, I like the three D S that pops. Yeah. So bring I mean, back so, that. Absolutely. I mean, if we're talking trunks, we're you know, talking costume, right? I think Tyler Hecklin's uh, Fleischer costume, right, that he has in the flashback episodes, 
it's fair. that's a top three Superman costume right there. It, it shows is. you that that costume still works, right? And just for some context for people, I think my favorite, my top three Superman costumes all have trunks on them. It would be the Brandon Ralph uh, Kingdom Come costume from Crisis. I think that's the best live action Superman costume. I do too. Fantastic. I agree. Um, and the only reason it beats Christopher Reeve is because of the production value, like a material and stuff. And I like the cape. I like the longer cape, you know, yep. uh, for Van Routh has to do. Chris Therese would be second because that is just right off the page. That proves that you can, <laughs> if you Dude, do it right, accurate. you can, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Yes, there have been tweaks over the years, but that's pretty much off the page Superman, his costume. And then third would be the Tyler Hecklin uh, uh, flashback costume. I, I'm just, I love it. And I, and I wish... I, I hope that they'll kind of maybe meld those a little bit moving forward on the show. I, I think they can continue to tweak Tyler yeah. Hecklin's costume, uh, but uh, or if he just wore the Flash showing all the time, that would be that would be fantastic. It would be it would be so. cool if there's like a, a an episode where like his costume gets torn, destroyed, lost, whatever, and uh, he's got to go back to the other one. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And uh, you know, um, and he has to go back to the other one. I think that would be um, pretty awesome. So my one friend, James, my co-host has messaged me. Uh, uh, and uh, it's just, he's like, oh man, he was, he wanted to join us today, but he wasn't able, unable to. So uh, it's just funny. But, um, you know, you talk about that and I agree. Like, I think Brandon Routh has always been able to pull off trunks. Well, even on his Superman returns, I think he pulled off the trunks. Well, Superman Returns, which is one of my least favorite costumes <laughs> for talking costumes. But, yeah, but I, hey, they had the trunks, though. So yeah. I, give credit I like I like the belt. You know, well, with Returns. the S in the front. Yeah, I thought it wasn't yeah, bad. That's fine. I just, I, I've never been a big, a huge fan of just the oval. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm. the belt's not bad. It, um, to me, it was the, it was the, much like the Tyler Heck one now, the high collar yes. and the shoulders. Like that, those are somehow connected somehow. And if you need a low collar for Superman, just showing off those collarbones, it's part of it. I don't, to me, that's part of it. I, yep. uh, it, I you know, it looks too much like a t shirt. <laughs> I got agree. The high collar, you know. <laughs> I agree completely. Um, yeah, see, we're on the same page here with, yeah. the, with that. Like, and you know, I've come to the realization about trunks is, um, I, I don't mind them in the, co- in the comics. That's fine. You know, the art's fine. Live action just depends on how you create the suit and wear the suit, you know, because like you said, the Kingdom Come suit, it worked fine. Like, and the Fleischer suit worked fine. Um, but then I just feel like there's that area where it could not work. So it's just like, I. Yeah, like on sometimes. the Henry Cavill costumes, they would stick out. Right. You know? Like, I don't, you know, but I think uh-huh. there's color you can bring to it. So, but it's just funny that. You, you just want something to break that up. You know, the, all that blue, you need something to break up the blue. And that's so. why I like, I like the belt that Tyler's costume has now. Like, it's the very new 52. It's got, it's got yellow and red. Yeah, his, his, his belt originally when he showed up on Supergirl, not a great belt. It did not a good uh, look. His costume, like, I just remember seeing that first costume when I was photo and I was just like. Yeah. But who is your favorite, other than Tom Welling, who's your favorite Clark Kent? <laughs> Other than Tom, well, yeah. Because, Tom, you know, Tom's always falls in that medium ground of, like, he's Clark, but, like, he hasn't really had to create that um, – people just showing up at the house – that split identity, you know, um, of Clark. Yeah, that's the thing about Tom Welling. If if they had made him do it and had more opportunity, he would have been great. I mean, because if you look at the end of season 10 – I mean, you mentioned the Blue Beetle episode before, the like Booster, right? He's so good in that. When he's yes. like, oh, I got, you guys have a bathroom, I got a milkshake, and all that. He's so good at that, right? Um, but yeah, he, you know. Like you said, he always played evil Clark, or yeah, he, like evil? the villain. Great. He's so and, good. <laughs> and I, I told, I, like, in my head, Canon, like I told Janine, I was like, if I could go back in time, like, if I was George Lucas, I'd be like, that, that's who I'd get for Anakin Skywalker. Like Tom Welling is Anakin Skywalker. Right? Hey, just, what, just think about it, because right it, would make, you, it yeah. would make you feel like, oh, he's big already as Vader, not that. Vader's height and everything is built because he's part robot, but that's a whole nother. Yeah. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, uh, I gotta go, I gotta go with, uh, this is tough. Um, I gotta go with Brandon Routh and Chris Reeve because Brandon Routh is playing Chris Reeve's Clark Kent, you know? Uh, so this is a kind of a cheat answer, but I think Brandon Routh kind of updated the Chris Reeve Clark Kent to make it more realistic you know yeah yeah because because we love the distinction between christopher reeve superman and clark kent 
But if he's that over the top bumbling, like who would take this guy seriously at all for anything, you know? And and that's like come to be like part of my, like I, I enjoy it for what it is, you know what I'm saying? But like, that's part of what kind of my problem is like the idea is to blend in and see Meek, but like, he's so over the top. I'm like, first of all, would you take him serious as a reporter? Like, you're like, okay, can this guy do this job? Like, Going undercover, getting the facts. You know what I'm saying? Job, right. Um, I, I will say, I will say, the first two Superman movies, right? Like he's new, so he's like he's like getting used to it, right? And by the time you go to the third and the fourth one, maybe that's just an acting thing, a writing thing. But he is more comfortable uh, being Clark Kent, you know. Like especially in Superman Four. I mean, we're talking about Superman Four. Yeah. There's some great stuff in there, and I, like him as Clark Kent is great in that because he's like a toned down, ridiculous version. Yeah. Uh, so in my head, Ken, it's like okay, he kind of tested the waters. He's like, okay, maybe I should. Maybe we should tone this back a little bit, you know, because the, the thing about the Brandon Ruth Clark kid is like, he's a goofy guy, but he's kind of a wallflower. He kind of blends in. He's not like sticking out too much. He's kind of, he's quirky, and, but right. he's not like, oh my, can you believe this guy over here drawing attention to himself too And that's much. the other thing is like, I feel like in the first Superman, the movie, like it's the opposite. Like he draws too much attention to himself for being too over the top. So you're like, right. you're like, everyone's paying attention to him, but not like hey, you're really overdoing it bro yeah <laughs> so so that's a yeah so so that's i would love to see more of brandon ralph as superman and clark kent you know i think he did him getting a second chance at it second crack at it with crisis was fantastic and we got to see a little bit of his clark and you know a little bit of superman and um i think everybody responded real well to it and of course i'm sure he'd love to do it so give us more of that please we have so many batman running around these days and we have some more superman so <laughs> even even okay so you know, fingers crossed, like my dream at this moment would be that because <clears throat> just recently, I don't know if you're watching Stargirl, um, last week's episode was when John Wesley Ship showed up again as Jay Garrick mm-hmm. on Stargirl with the JSA. Now, now he's a different Jay Garrick than the one from The Flash. It's it's kind of in that murkiness. <laughs> of, <laughs> okay. This is a post-crisis rewritten history because uh-huh. Stargirl's Earth is the new Earth 2 that has right. to be discovered by... Uh, team Flash, right? You know what I'm saying. So it's kind of that. It's post crisis revisionist history, you know. But it's very much the. It feels the same. Like I really love seeing him as Jay because if you're watching the show, I really think Starman, as he's supposed to be, is a d bag. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and and like Jay puts him in his place. All right. Um, all right. So like with that. all that, what I'm saying is, I would love, um, Brandon Ralph Kingdom Come Superman to be some form of like the JSA or past Superman or something, you know? Yeah. There's plenty of ways to use them that way. Absolutely. You and I had this conversation about like how crisis affected the other shows was like, you know, they tried to say like all the DC shows existed. Then post crisis, only the shows that they tease at the end still existed. And it was kind of one of those, (laughs) you know, so like, so that was the end of Smallville. Like what we saw, like Smallville ended in a, you know, that post crisis because, you know, in what's what I cracked up about is they threw Swamp Thing in there, and yet Swamp Thing was already being canceled. canceled. <laughs> all they had to do, and I know they only had Tom and Erica for one day, but seriously, like all they had to do was shoot one shot, one setup of them on the porch, two little girls, you know, looking up at the sun and like Earth 167. That's all we needed. And it would have taken an extra three hours. Maybe they just didn't have the time that day. Or not even at the, don't even go up to the porch. Go up and stand next to the fence where you already were. You don't have to change your camera setup yep. or anything. And I just, I needed that one extra thing to make, to, I'm like, because what am, am I supposed to think Smallville got a race now? I mean, I didn't that, see them get restored. I didn't see get Birds of Prey get restored or, or Batman 66. All of the shows from way back, you just erased them. So, I mean, that's, it's horrible, know, man. But that's kind of how I felt at the same time. Like, this is, um, well, they botched that whole thing, though, you know, because that, well, well, I mean, like the end. Because the whole point of the Christ on Infinite Earth in the comics is like, all right, everything's on one Earth now. I'm like, okay. And of course, as years went on, the comics like, well, there's 52 Earths. Now there's... Now. Fine, yeah. it's the comics. But in the TV universe, like, they were like, all right, that's the crisis. And then you have Black Lightning and Supergirl and the Flash was, and Arrow. Which was awesome. And Fantastic. Then also, and then they were like, well, Titans is on another Earth. And then the other big one was, they for sure said, Doom Patrol is another Earth. Even though we had Doom Patrol on Titans. <laughs> Which just comes, yes, yeah, the conflict there. It just, see, here's the thing, right? They were like, well, crap, we can't do two Superman. Because remember in Christ, and, and, you know, if people are familiar with the comic book, in Christ and Infinite Earths, they, mold, they merge all the Earths together. But then the Earth 2 Superman is still around. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa where's my job? And he goes to Perry White's office. It's kind of a funny thing. Um 
you couldn't do that because they'd have to explain, well, what do we do with Brandon Ralph or what do we do with so-and-so? And, uh, but, but I guess my point with them botching it was like, okay, I get it. We're all on one earth now. And then at the end, like the Stephen Mel voiceover is like, and then another earth showed back up and they're still there. I'm like, that was slop to me. That was sloppy. That, that was would, sloppy. That would have been better if it had been like this, like, just like after everything had ended we had this like black of just seeing like the planets divide again and like a tease because then mm. like they've done nothing with the idea of this new multiverse. Nothing has changed other than black lightning, which is now over and Supergirl, <laughs> which is now over. Yeah. And, and <laughs> we have a new universe. Batwoman who has no connection to these people, you know, so yeah. all, all that setup is over. That, that, that justice league <laughs> shot of them is, is kind of a joke now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Green arrow is dead. <laughs> you know, and the, it's, so it's just like, and the thing is, like, like we said, they re, they showed us what was still restored. Brandon Rouse Earth was restored. Yeah, and he's got the yellow S. You so, know, which I would love to see that. So it's kind of like, okay, so why would you do that just to get that iconic shot? You know, that's fine though. That was much yeah, better than I mean, Superman Returns one. I'm fine for it. And the music, like, I don't know. I'm fan service sometimes. I love it. And sometimes I roll my eyes, but I loved it that time. So, <laughs> What about evil Kevin Conroy Superman? Is he back? <laughs> no. And now, I mean, that was just great, period, just because it was like the voice of Batman. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's tough. I didn't bother me that he was evil, though. A lot of people were really upset by that. Like, we finally I, got Kevin Conroy live action. He's evil Batman. I'm like, yeah, well, you know. He flipped the script on us, you know, and it, it even had like the, you know, Kingdom Come style armor just to, you know, throw yeah. some. And then some Dark Knight Returns dialogue and all that. Yeah. I don't know. It was just, it was so amazing to, although he wasn't in a Batman costume, right? Um, to, to hear his voice and see his face and interact with Batman universe characters. Um, that was fantastic. So I, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people feel gypped about that, but other, short of him being Bruce Wayne and Batman Beyond, what else were you going to do with him? You know what I mean? Right. So, right. I mean, which I would still love. I would like Michael Keaton to be that. But if not, let's get Kevin Connery up there. Yeah. Uh, as but Batman Beyond. I don't know. What were we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <The> tangents. <laughs> I'm, so I'm, I'm like looking, at, I'm looking at all the questions like I had mapped out, and I'm just like, I think we've hit in, inadvertently in every way we've had, but. Here's one. Um, I got two more for you. Sure. If you could have one of Superman slash Kryptonian powers, which one would it be? Just one. Yeah, I would say invulnerability. Because yep. then, because I feel like, and you can get really into the weeds with this. I'm like, yeah, if I fly, but I'm not invulnerable. <laughs> That's not going to help me if a bird hits me. <laughs> that was like when I first was like po- posed this question and we were talking through it with my friend Rebecca from Supergirl Radio. I was like, you know what? Like most time I go for flight, but then I got thinking like speed and all that. Like if my skin's not protected, like, you know, the flash has the speed force, you know, that kind of protects him. But I'm like, if I don't have invulnerable skin and I'm flying or moving or anything, that's going to hurt. <laughs> like, like strength mm-hmm. is great. But if my, if I'm not invulnerable, like that's going to yeah. hurt. So like, I, like, yeah, I can lift a car, but is it going to like cut my arm off when I lift it up? Like, so these are, I don't I, just safety net is a vulnerability. <laughs> you know, that's like you, you get pushed off a building, you're fine, right? Yep. You, you're in an explosion, you can walk out of it, right? So I go to invulnerability. That, yep. that would be my go to. Like, yes, it would be cool to fly. Um, but I mean, x ray vision, heat vision, like those don't really appeal to me. I mean, they're kind of cool, but I just. Heat vision is just the one I would love because, like, you know, just because it's that, like, I could do something from a distance, just like someone making you mad, you're just like, you know, burn their tires or, you know, mm-hmm. heat up your steak, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. You, what, 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 side note, since we're all about tangents here, favorite heat vision for you? Do you like small, to me, it's Smallville. I thought that was very clever. I like Smallville's and like that ties into like, it was first, but then, you know, in the, in the screen, they did it with Superman Returns, like the waves, the heat waves, you know, like I thought that was the best, that like the projection of heat. Instead um, of laser vision, which a lot of people call you know, it, right? I thought yeah. the the blue from their eyes and and Supergirl and Super uh, Man were at first. I thought was cool, but then like James and I have kind of rationale. Like that would have been cool if like in Superman and Lois when they are using their heat vision and they went full solar flare. It goes like from red to blue as it gets hotter, right? Yeah, like if they that's would right, sh- kids. Blue is hotter than red. It's scientific fact. Yeah. If they would show that, like you know, when they're like going full solar flare when they mm-hmm. into the eraser, if it was like it was oh, red yeah. and then it went blue, yeah. 
that'd be a cool way of tying it back around instead of just ignoring the fact it was ever blue right yeah <laughs> yeah what, they, to, they were doing a lot of stuff on that show that's his own conversation but uh, um, well, Smallville's but yeah. evolved too, right? I remember when I first, because I was so excited, like, man, Heat Division, this is awesome. And season two, Smallville, I'm like, I remember watching it the first time. I was like, what? What? What, what is that? Like, some squiggly line? I was like, <laughs> over the course of the episode, I got used to it. I'm like, you know what? That's really clever because we're never supposed to see Heat Vision. You know, that's why he can use it in front of other people and that kind of thing. So that, that works. But then as Smallville went on, like, he got more powerful, like, you know, to, to your point, right? As if they had, if, if only they had done that in Supergirl and Superman showing the red to blue, Smallville went from like, clear to like red and orange and yellow kind of so like they they played with that evolution of the power level too so uh but i just thought of all the reinventions of powers obviously the the special effects that's another reason i love smallville right so i'm smallville guy right? i'm here to i'm here to talk yeah. about it so like all of the powers you know x-ray vision was fantastic seeing the skeletons the super speed using the matrix special effects that had changed the game then in the early you know 2000s like smallville is the best you know, articulation of all those powers to, to me. So that's another reason to love it. And have have you watched Titans at all this season? I have not. I have not, to be honest. The, the show is like, it's, Titans is one of those like, so it's got hit and misses. I, I, but, have, I have friends that are keeping up with it and I've heard things. <laughs> um, but so. what I love is Superboy. I okay, love the way I've they're heard, doing I've heard Superboy. consistently he's, he's, they were handling him very well. So I love that he's a little bit more timid and I don't, I hate using childlike, but there's a little bit more innocence to him instead of being like, the angry Superboy from Young Justice. Mm, um, okay, but one thing is when he does X-ray vision, his eyes go white. It's like this white glow. So like oh. it's really cool because they found a way of like visualizing him like Superman, Superboy, like doing X-ray vision. So it's kind of cool, just you know, instead of doing like the glasses down, like you know, and I mean, super, I love that. Uh, I love the kind of like lean forward and squint a little bit though like i you know and then they do like the <laughs> like you know lois and clark had the first kind of representation of like seeing something with his eyes oh I, I i do not like that at all i do not like when like beam like <laughs> cones come out of his eyes and like that's i don't know like it was but, just but it's hard to do the technology wasn't there yet so it's just like do, right? how they did super hearing on small door they he'd like turn and they like spin around and like zoom in like you'd see the eardrum you know that's one effect that small World never could really crack they tried Many they tried the eardrum, the CGI eardrum, the CSI style. They tried the whole like zoom in on somebody's mouth, right? Mm-hmm. And then they held the hold up, like you said, like like a you do a three hundred and sixty around them and like like wash them out with light. <laughs> like yep. they just could never. Superhuman is a hard one to articulate, so and, that, and, that's that's one that everybody has trouble with. And that's why, like when I saw the Superboy and using the eyes, I was like, oh, that's that's cool. It's just a way of kind of you know because it's like. It's like when you go back and watch like X Men First Class, and James McAvoy as Professor Ash, like, what do I do? And he did, he did the touching like, the temple thing, yeah. you know, just to kind of give some sort of like cue that he's using his ability. Because other than that, it's just like this. Yeah, it's just it, and same thing with you know Christopher Reeve in the movies. Like he doesn't use it that much, but it, there's no like he's just standing there and you kind of like have a close up of his face looking at things and he's doing X Ray, and it's like okay, we could we could make this more interesting. So whenever they can play with that. That's yeah. cool. I, I I wasn't I wasn't aware of that about the because I've I've Titans and these are, that's a big blind spot for me so far. It's not, you know, as you know, I watch so much Smallville and older <laughs> superhero shows. It's like I mean, I I plan to watch this at some point. I'm looking forward to it. And it's great that this this library of <laughs> superhero <laughs> stuff with characters I like is it just building up. Uh, but uh, I've yeah I've heard it's hit or miss, but I've heard they did a lot a lot of cool things. I'm looking forward to getting into it down the road. So I reckon I always tell people like if they're it just season two, watch the episode of Connor. Because it's very bottled. Like, it's very, like, you don't have to have seen the show. Like, you'll get the little bit of mm-hmm. connective context. But that's, you know. Yeah, what, I, might have to do, I, I might have to do a Superman special about that sometime on, <laughs> on my podcast. Give me the excuse to dive into Titans for that. Cause, cause, and I love, I love crypto. I love dogs. I love crypto. Yeah, I, I love that I, he's I got in a white there. dog on crypto. It's fantastic. So I love that crypto's in there. Um, so my last question, and then we'll let you go, because for some reason, everyone decided in the family to show up to my house at the same time. <laughs> um, in the comics or in film, the Kents alive or dead? How do you feel the Kent should play their role? Should they be alive or dead? I think they should be alive. I think that Superman is not Spider-Man. And I think they lean into that a little too much. Like Jonathan Kent is not Uncle Ben, right? But but and I love Superman the movie, right? But and that's fine <laughs> to do with that. You know, you, you there there are valid interpretations of them being alive, not being alive. But I think because, like, the iconic definitive version of Superman did that, everybody feels like they have to do that. Yeah. Like, on Smallville, when they thought, at the time they were wrapping up in season five, like, all right, well, I guess it's time to kill Jonathan Kent. 
oh, we ran five more years. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have killed off uh, Jonathan Kent. Um, and that's a great refreshing thing about Lois and Clark. And I've really been rediscovering Lois and Clark's TV show and, you know, becoming friends with Matt Tricks. It is the Lois yeah. and Clark podcast and having the, um, it be on streaming, you know, more accessible and stuff. And, and having him just be able to talk to the kids and stuff is great because like, I, I like where everybody doesn't know secret identities, which yes. is a thing in the Arrowverse. And so if you're going to keep that where like everybody doesn't know, like obviously Lois will know at some point, you know, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah. Um, but other than that, he doesn't allow people to talk to. So I love that he has his parents to kind of rely on because the kids are kind of what made Superman who he is. They're the difference between him being, you know, good or, or maybe, maybe not so good as they've seen in other versions. No, so I, I totally 100% are behind you. Um, because, you know, like we watched uh, for review, the George Reeves and the Kirk Allen series and both of them start like he's adopted. And it's like, then as he reached manhood, the, the foster parents passed away and like, they're gone. Right. And it's just like, wow, like, dang, they killed them both off quick. Because I think the, the idea then was like the kids were even older. Yeah. You know? They were, they were like, they were like in their 60s when they found when they him. They found him. The, right. So that, that's, yeah. I'm a little more like, okay, that's, I'll go with that. But they'll, in small, they're like, you can't cast these young kids and then kill off Jonathan. Like, what are you doing? So I, I like, you know, putting the kids as finding him when they're in their like mid to late 30s, where they're just old enough to where they might be out of their child years, like in that mindset. But right. they're not, and that's what makes Clark more of a miracle because Martha couldn't have kids biologically, right? right. Although she technically, quote unquote, should have been able to at that age range. So that's and a that's, layer that I enjoy about Smallville. And I like one of my favorite is I think it was in Grant Morrison's. I think it's collected in the Grant Morrison trade in Volume One of New Fifty Two Action. Is when you have this. Um, it's Jonathan and Martha going to the fertility doctor, and they're using all their savings to try everything, and it's like. The, the day that they're driving home from the doctor when they found out that, like there is no hope, like they've exhausted everything is when they find Clark's ship. And it just there makes it that much more stronger, you know? Um, yeah. And I agree. Like, you know, I love the Superman earth one that J. Michael Shazinski did, but I hated the Kents where it gone, you know, in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like Superman and Lois, for example, makes sense at that point in his life. Right. To have even, lost. even they killed off Jonathan, and I was like knowing ahead of the time, like, oh man, they're gonna kill Martha too. But if you think about the timeline, she would be like in her eighties by then. Right. So. so that makes sense for me because, like, you know, like I said, once again, if you were to watch Lois and Clark and then kind of jump to this show, you have both parents, and then it's like now it's like what what is Clark now without his parents? You know, like that whole show is about. He's the, you know, one of the themes is like, he's now the paternal, like, I, I kind of am surprised they didn't kill off Sam Lane. And I say that. I was, I was shocked as well. Yeah. Because I, I thought shocked. they would, because if you look at the progression of the show, his mother dies. Jarrell is later destroyed. So the last parental figure that Clark has is Sam Lane, his father-in-law. And I thought Sam Lane would die. So the idea of like, Clark no longer has any paternal figure to look up to. Because he is that paternal figure for his boys. And that's like the closing of that arc of, I can't go to anyone else for wisdom. The son becomes the father. The <laughs> father becomes the son. There it is. So. You, you know, and I, I just, I like the kids being alive because I feel like the kids become Ma and Pa to like everyone in the DC universe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Supergirl, especially. Right. That, that's right. That's a misstep on Supergirl's show. Like, I'm like, who? who? She has a sister and random parents now? Super, Supergirl's whole legacy period in the comics is so convoluted. Oh, yeah, like, like which version and all that. Definitely. Yeah, when yeah. you get into, like, you have the, the Danvers, the Linda Lee, the Matrix, like all this. Yes, Matrix. That's the, that's the one that dated Lex Luthor during the Death of Superman, right? Yeah, like, and you're just like, ridiculous. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, that's that whole crisis being the only Kryptonian thing. But, you know, one of my favorites I always reference is I love the um, episode of Justice League Unlimited, Comfort and Joy, where Clark comes home for Christmas and brings Martian Manhunter. And Martha's like, has like the sweater, like we knitted an extra, you know, gift from church here. And like, he like, oh, yeah. gets bigger and puts it on. And she's like, there's blankets in the cupboard or, you know, like that's how I see them like to anybody that Clark brings around. And mm-hmm. even it echoes back in the uh, Superman man of tomorrow animated film. When Martian Manhunter shows up at the Kent's door and Clark's talking to him, the Kent's are very welcoming. And that's just how I see them to, Everyone, like one of my favorite memes was the Mother's Day uh, meme of Superman hugging Martha, like the first panel. And then there's Batman 
And then Martha Kent's hugging Bruce. Mm. You know, I haven't like, seen that. That's like great. It's, it's, it's somebody's, somebody did it, but like, you know, that's how I would see her period. Like yeah. she, she's the mother to anyone who comes around. Yeah. So I like the idea of the Kent's being alive, you know? And that's like, mm-hmm. it's one of those questions I throw out there for fans. Cause you know, we, we've had both of them gone, just one of them gone, but we've never had Martha die first. And it'd just mm. be Jonathan and Clark. Because it's always Smallville, kind of bit- Smallville played with that in season five in the, in the episode <laughs> of Brainiac, right? Where she had like the disease and you're like, oh man, are they going to kill Martha? But no, they, they stuck to Jonathan. But that would be interesting. I would love I, to there's see. There's got to be a version like that eventually, right? I would love I to see so. everything flipped, where it's like, just for like, I don't know. I don't know what I would want to see them. Like, Martha dies first and it's it Jarrell's crystal destroyed and he has Lara's crystal. So the idea is his earth father's mm. alive and his Kryptonian mother, instead of always being the opposite where his earth mother lives and he has his Kryptonian father. Yeah. It'd be kind of interesting, but yeah. Zach, why don't you tell everyone if they haven't picked up on, you know, your podcast where they can find you online and get a hold of you and listen to your podcast. Sure. Well, you can find me personally on Twitter, more on Zach. That's M O O R E O N Z S E H. I'm also the host of Always Hold On to Smallville, which is a podcast where we talk about each and every episode of that young Superman show. Uh, You've been on it several times. and will be again in the future. Always fun talking to you about Smallville. And uh, you can find us on Twitter, Always Smallville with one S, Always Hold On to Smallville on Facebook, and you can send us an email at alwayssmallville at gmail.com. And I also do some podcasts on the United Federation of Podcasts, where you can find us at UFP Earth. Do a movie show, do a show about Bigfoot, you know, just some... You no, know, uh, bi-weekly, monthly, you know, over there. But uh, have a good time talking to some friends about some some subjects that we love over there. And that's Twitter at UFD Earth. All right. Well, Zach, thanks for being on Krypton Report. Uh, we appreciate coming on and talking, you know, Smallville, which, you know, always gets some love on this show. But it's just nice to see that, you know, just branching out that the super fandom is huge. There's a Superman for everyone. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to argue over you know, small stuff. So until next time, dear listeners, remember. Look up in the, sky. the Krypton Report is a Tears production. We thank you for listening and enjoying, and please support us on our Patreon account, our T Public store, and check out our social media. Always remember to look up in the sky.